So first of all, let's take a look at the game the way it uh, is originally coded now. And um, oh. mouth. Hey everyone, welcome back to our journey of learning to develop video games for the ZX Spectrum Next personal computer. And today we're going to do something a little different, something that's going to be uh, pretty cool, I think. We're going to have some fun and we're going to actually take a look at an existing game and see if we can make some modifications to it to uh, put our own personal touches on it. So this is a game that's called Ranbull and I'll just show you a picture of the artwork that was made for it by the creator of this game, uh, Kevin Phillips, who's a friend of mine in the ZX Spectrum Next community. And he made this game using the ZX Basic, uh, Next Basic, actually, programming language. And it's a really good example, I think, of what can be done using this uh, Next Basic language. It's um, quite a powerful language. It has some really impressive features built into it that allow you to make some uh, really cool games. It has features such as hardware sprites, for example, built into it. And as we know, the ZX Spectrum Next personal computer itself runs at up to 28 megahertz, which really makes it easy to make some games that uh, look quite impressive. And the graphics that he's made for it and the programming that he's done uh, have come together to make what I think is a, a pretty cool game. And um, like I said, a really good example of what can be done with this Next Basic programming language. So we're going to take a look at this game and first of all see what uh, areas we think we might be able to make some changes, uh, maybe make some improvements possibly, and at least put our own personal touches on it to see how we can modify both the code and uh, some of the graphics as well. So that should be pretty interesting. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in trying to uh, make your own changes to an existing game, I think this would be a good place to start because even though I'm not really all that familiar with Next Basic yet, I'm familiar with the regular basic, but Next Basic has its own uh, enhancements to it and some additional features, some additional commands that I haven't gone over yet. So we're going to uh, take a look at the code together and see if we can find some places we can make some changes to it. And like I said, we'll also take a look at the graphics and see what uh, changes and improvements, maybe some uh, additions and upgrades and tweaks we can make to the graphics and kind of make uh, this game a little bit different and add our own personal touches and uh, kind of put our own flavor on it. So first of all, let's take a look at the game the way it's originally made and see what areas we might be able to make some changes. Let's take a look. Okay, and if you'd like to follow along with me and try out these modifications for yourself or just download the game to make your own modifications, you can get it by going to this website here, which is itch.io. And the easiest way to find it without having to remember exactly where it is is you can just go here to the search uh, bar here and then do a search for Ranbull, which is R-A-N-B-L-E. And that comes up with these results. And here is the Ranbull game here by Kevman3D. So that's the one we want. So we just click on that. And here you can see all the information about this game, some details about it and there's a link here to download it. So before we download it, let's just click on this preview over here and see what the preview of the game looks like. And I'll just make this full screen so we can get a better view of it. Okay, so let's see what areas we can maybe make some modifications to this game by taking a look at the gameplay and seeing what ideas we come up with. So if you're familiar with the original Scramble game, you can see it's quite a good remake of it with the spaceships and the fuel tanks and the enemy uh, saucers and everything. It's uh, really well done and it really has a smooth kind of addictive gameplay. But I think we can maybe make some modifications to it. And let's take a look at what we can do. So one thing I notice is if you look up here in the top right, there are two remaining ships, player ships, uh, plus the one that you're playing with right now. So you have a maximum total of three lives. So I think it might be nice to maybe increase that so we can get extra lives so we can play the game as long as possible. And this game also has levels. So another thing is there's no actual indication of which level you're on as you're progressing through the game. And since the game does have 
uh, levels that it goes through. Like, for example, now you can see the screen is changing from red terrain color to blue terrain. So that shows the demarcation between levels. And there are actually four different types of levels, but the game just goes on indefinitely as far as I know. So the level numbers increase uh, infinitely. So I think it would be good to add a level counter on the screen so we know what level we're on and we get some feeling of progression as we're making our way through the game. So I'll just play it again here and see what else we can see. So uh, a level counter I think would be good in addition to being able to get some extra lives. So maybe every time we uh, complete a level we could get an extra life. And then what else could we have? Well I see there's a fuel gauge at the top left there. Um, it might be nice to add some sort of warning for when the fuel is getting low. So if we could find a way to add a, a low fuel warning, perhaps that would be uh, something good to add as well. And then finally, let's just see if we can maybe touch up some of the graphics and, and make a little modification to some of the sprites in this game. This game uses um, a lot of sprites for its graphics. And let's see where we can make some additions or modifications to the sprites and kind of uh, tweak the graphics a little bit. Okay, so that's what the game looks like and we're going to download this game. So let me just exit out of here. And if we download the game, we can see down below here, it lists the different files that you actually get when you download this game. You get this uh, top file here, which is a zip file which contains the game itself, uh, the basic version of the game, since it's written in the next basic language. But in addition, you also get some really cool add-ons, which is a really generous thing I think that Kevin did. In particular, this next one here, Code Guide Ramble, which is a 40 plus page written text description or explanation of the code that he actually created for this game in case you want to make some modifications to the game yourself. Uh, you can go through that PDF file and it actually explains the different sections of the code if you want to try and make your own changes. And in addition to that, you also get this PDF down at the bottom here, which is this uh, graphic that I showed you originally. Well, I'm in the little bubble at the bottom, but <laughs> you saw the graphic large before. It's this um, uh, graphic that you can use use to make your own cassette insert if you want to make a physical copy of this game and put it in a cassette box. So if you click on this download now button right here, it will take you to the download page where you can leave a donation. Hopefully you'll make a donation to download this game to try and support the creator because it's a really, I think, a fantastic product. And you can donate at whatever level you feel comfortable with and you'll get those three files and uh, all you have to do is download them and then you can put them onto the SD card that comes with your ZX Spectrum Next. Or if you know how to load a game into uh, an emulator such as C-Spect, for example, then you could run it there as well. But I'll be using real hardware on an actual ZX Spectrum Next computer. So let's go and take a look at that now. Okay, here let's take a look at the files that you get when you download this game. And here is the zip folder that contains the game files. And here are the other two files that I mentioned, which is this one here, which is the code guide. And here it says Granville Physical J Card. That's the uh, graphic picture that you can use to make your own physical game if you want to make up uh, an insert card for a cassette box. But um, let's go ahead and just take a quick peek at this code guide here. So we'll open up that PDF. And we can see this really impressive and detailed uh, guide that Kevin made to explain exactly how the code in this game works. And you can see it's all illustrated with the pictures here. And it shows you uh, the, even here's the sprites and how he created the sprites for the game. And there's descriptions of all the different parts of the code for the game and some little tips and his little funny picture here that he puts next to his tips. And he, here he's talking about device drivers, for example, for the sound. And you can go through and read this whole document and get some insights into the code for this game. And see here he's even describing how he creates the levels with the terrain and how that gets generated. 
So it's really cool and really a generous thing that he's done here to actually go through and document all this information for us. And I'm really appreciative that he's done that. It's a really cool, uh, it's a really cool thing to do. I, w I wish all the developers would do this. It would be a fantastic way to share the information with the gaming community, particularly with the development community and people who are wanting to create their own games. So uh, just the value of this document alone is is worth <laughs> the price of the game, which is actually free. But of course, you should donate something just for uh, all the work you put into it. So that's the really awesome uh, manual or code explanation that comes along with his game. And let's take a look at, well, let's just take a look at this card here while we're here, which is the graphic card that he made up for a cassette inlay, which is also really cool. If you want to make your own physical copy, you can print out this graphic here, and it shows you how to cut it and where to fold it. And it even makes a little slot here to put in your SD card if you want to save the game onto an SD card and keep it in this uh, cassette box with this cool graphic uh, insert. That's really, uh, really a nice touch that he added that. So those are those two files that you get along with this game. And when you unzip this uh, Randall folder, you end up with these game files here and these are all the assets that are used to actually make the game run. And there are a few that we're going to be interested in doing our modifications. Well, there's um, this one here, which is .bas. So randallgame.bas, that is the basic game. So that's the uh, file that we're going to run on the ZX Spectrum Next computer to actually play the game. So that's the one we're going to be making modifications to the code. And then here is a .spr file, randall7gfx.spr. That is the sprite graphic file that we're going to be using to modify some of the graphics for this game. And then finally, I just want to point out this last uh, file here, which is called randallsourcecode.txt, which is also another great bonus that uh, Kevin has included with this game. And if we open that up, we can see that this is actually a complete code listing of the game in text form, which is awesome for us because we're going to actually use this um, file to go through and take a look at the code for this game and see where we can uh, make some modifications to it. So this is all fantastic stuff that we can use and that's why I think this is a perfect game for us to start uh, making mod modifications to as kind of an introduction to get us uh, taking a look at a real game that's actually uh, available for people to play. And uh, we can start off not making an entire game ourselves, but we'll start off by just trying to modify an existing game. And I think this is a good place to start. Now, a lot of the code might be confusing, and it, it is actually confusing to me as well because I haven't learned all of these different commands and everything, and it looks quite daunting when you look at it. So uh, don't worry about that. We're going to... We're going to uh, cheat a little bit and just kind of experiment and play around and see where we can make some modifications. But before we do that, why don't we load up the game and we'll take a look at it uh, in real life and we'll actually play it a little bit and see what it looks like. 